Dear Maddie, some things I don't want to write, the same things you don't want to read. But what happened to my son, your uncle, your mother's brother, your, your mom's brother, over the past few months deserves to be chronicled. Somebody should bear witness to it. Someone should remember. I call it Ben's awful, magnificent autumn. It started really the day that Gabby, Ben's 15-year-old daughter, was diagnosed with Ewing's sarcoma, a rare form of bone cancer. This came on, came on top of Ben's own diagnosis of a recurrence of his adenoidal cystic carcinoma, which had now metastasized to his brain in the form of a brain tumor. The news was almost more than anyone could stand, and so although the plight of Ben and Gabby became almost instant cause celebre on every prayer list, prayer chain in the area, we could barely talk about it. Throughout the next few months, Gabby went on to have surgery, begin chemotherapy, and celebrate her 16th birthday, sans hair, sans fingernails. She also would undergo a second surgery, get a wig, and somehow turn a babushka into a very stylish accessory. <laughs> the girl has distinctive taste in clothing. Ben, meanwhile, entered into a months-long debate with a wide range of doctors and lay people, friends and family, over his course of action. Some advocated for radical surgery, others for homeopathic treatment. By August, he was doing the preliminary workups at Jefferson Hospital in Philadelphia for a surgery that would remove in steps his brain tumor, his jaw, and replace or try to rebuild his jaw with a bone removed from his leg. What the doctors at Jefferson hadn't told him, however, was that the metastasis had spread also to his lungs, and Ben had been abundantly clear with his doctors that he would not consent to surgery if his condition was not localized to his head. He is, after all, a 25-year cancer survivor and knows full well the prognosis for cancer victims and much of the territory through which they navigate. On the last day of his prep work, in the last meeting of the day, an angel sent by God in the form of a nurse accidentally allowed him and Linda to see his lab work on her computer screen. There they saw the hidden information, the tumors in his lungs. Furious, Ben walked away from the surgery and out to the rest of his life. Two days later, on a Monday, on the day he was to have been invalided, at the very time the mutilation of his face was to have begun, Ben water skied Blue Marsh Lake in a driving rainstorm, towed behind a boat driven by his parents at full throttle, jumping the wake as as though his hair was on fire. That was the beginning of Ben's magnificent autumn. You see, Ben had continued to work all this time, and Ben's work was doing a golf trick shot show, giving golf lessons, and training world-class long drive competitors. One of his shows was for a tournament run by former baseball Iron Man Cal Ripken. Covering this event was a sports reporter named Jason Bristol for the local Fox News channel, and while his report that night was only about Cal Ripken, he also watched Ben show Ben's show and interviewed him during the day. This interview and a subsequent filming of some of Ben's incredible shots, plus some very poignant comments by Ben's wife Anne, were woven into a report by Jason a few nights later in the evening news. Seen by a large viewing audience, this vignette appeared to ignite a huge response and serve as a catalyst to a couple of other events already in the planning stages. One was a golf tournament called Take a Swing for Ben and Gabby, organized primarily by Lebanon Country Club Pro Emeritus Mike Swisher and the good people of the club who donated the course, the tea times, the kitchen, and all their facilities to Ben and Gabby's cause. Former LPGA celebrity Jan Stephenson volunteered to be the MC and a slew of Ben's long drive and trick shot cronies lent their names and talents to the endeavor. Jason Bristol again produced another TV segment promoting the event, and the Daily News ran a huge front page feature on the story. The tournament sold out in one week. The overflow of entries necessitated a morning wave of players. Ben did his show to a packed house, 
and over $70,000 was raised. And this happened while Ben had been scheduled to be flat on his back in an oncology ward, being fed through a tube, clinging to life. The long, the long drive guys put the word out, and Ben was invited to present his show as the featured entertainer at the Remax World Long Drive Championship in Mesquite, Nevada in November. Wouldn't you know it? Didn't the show go well, but Carl Walter, the guy Ben was training, won the thing and claimed the title as the World Long Drive King. And in his acceptance of the trophy, he called Ben out of the audience to share in his victory. All of this was captured by seven ESPN cameras and will be aired on Christmas Day on the Sports Channel. <laughs> Meanwhile, the mm -hmm. second thing that was happening was that Ben was voted into the central chapter of the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. The vote took place in spring, but the lead up to the induction ceremony and the banquet itself were fall events. By now, Ben's and Gabby's and his family's story was well known, and additional articles appeared in the local newspapers. At the Hall of Fame banquet, Ben was the last to be introduced and his acceptance speech, composed extemporaneously and delivered without notes, was so gracious and so poignant that it brought forth a spontaneous standing ovation. This, while he might have been fighting for his eyesight, his body and muscles atrophying while being treated in the conventional way. I know I'm being sarcastic and dismissive of conventional medicine. I realize I'm flaunting Ben's successes in the face of the beast and that all of their dire predictions might come true, although delayed. But I just don't think that way. I'm informed just enough to know that there is an epic struggle going on between the allopathic and homeopathic schools of thought regarding cancer treatment and health in general. Billions of dollars are at stake. Lives hang in the balance. And then there is the fact that we'll all die sometime and somewhere. Today, Ben is in terrible pain. Maybe he even questions whether he'd be better off had he had the surgery, assuming it would have worked. At any rate, according to my thinking, he got to experience a cornucopia of success and recognition that almost defies belief. <clears throat> the unluckiest guy turned out to be the luckiest guy of all. Because no matter how this turns out, he knows he is loved and appreciated. He knows, and knows his children know, that he was significant, and that he inspires and uplifts other people. I believe that miracles are possible, and that you never give up. But none of that matters really. What's important to this story is that Ben Witter lived an autumn in a good way, unlike that which many, if any of us, will ever get to experience. And I just thought that someone should know. Who wrote that? I did. <laughs> I did. <clears throat> Can I have a copy of it? Sure. God is great, God is good, and we thank him for this food. By his hands we all repent. Give us Lord our daily bread and we amen.